Hello guys and welcome to Technical Insights episode number 58. Guys, we started Technical Insights at the start of this year and we're at 58 episodes already. Um, I'm absolutely loving it and I can tell you now that we've got some great stuff planned for next year. Um, podcasts will be coming back full flow um, just been really spending some time in the community and producing some more content for our students and members here at Technical Effects. However, hope you guys all had a great week. Last week, we see some super downside in the dollar, and this episode's going to be slightly different. Um, I think we've got six markets that we're going to be taking a look at, and we're going to be taking a look at these levels from a larger picture. Okay, so normally we're always dived in and focused on the four hour and the one hour time frame. Whereas what I want to take a look at here is the larger picture of these markets. So we've got just the higher time frame key levels in place. Um, so we're going to be taking a look to see where we could possibly see price heading over the next weeks and into next year. Okay, so do give us a like and subscribe to our channel uh, it's been a pleasure to have you guys with us over the past year and i'm looking forward to future content for you guys so let's get into it as you can see here guys um we're going to be taking a look at the dollar us oil usd cad euro japan yen gb pound usd and aud usd so these markets um are the markets that we will be covering in this episode. I'm excited to get into this episode because of it. I'm always talking about the bigger picture, and that's why I wanted to bring you guys the bigger picture in this episode. Okay, so let's just take a look. We're on the weekly time frame of the dollar. We've got our key significant horizontal levels placed on the chart where we've seen price be respected and rejected. Okay, now everyone will place their levels at a slight different number. It's fair enough. It, it's going to happen. You see things at this level. That's what you see in the market. And this is what I see in the market. So, for example, this level here, you could drag it down ever so slightly to be on this low. That's fine. But personally, for me, I prefer just to bring my levels to round levels and keep them at a significant point like that because I know that it's a zone. Okay. I know it's a zone. If I go down the time frames and need to adjust it, I'll adjust them. And that's what I do. So, for people that have different levels, that's fair enough. For people that have the same levels, that's fair enough as well. Okay, so never look at somebody else's chart and think that you're always doing something wrong just because of you may have something ever so slightly different. But remember, this is what works for you and that's what you want to focus on. So this level here of 119 held price for quite some time. Um, price was trading above this region here for several weeks and we've now finally started to see the market break down as you can see there for about 10 weeks we was trading in that zone maybe even a bit before but we was come into the downside in that area just there so we was flowing into the low we then rejected from that point and we pushed back off from this region look left okay we just come back into this significant point here where we then rejected to the downside and we're now breaking through 119. If we take a look left, we'll be able to see some pretty clean traffic movement happening over here on the left. And I'm actually expecting possibly to just continue, continue this movement down into the area of 117, 11750 is where I'm looking for that movement to continue into. So I'm looking for the dollar to continue to the downside, but we know that markets flow. So we may not just get a straight drop into that area. So when we start to go down the time frames, this is where you'll be able to see that we're now on the daily time frame. Now we've got a market flow. We can see that we had here retracement. We then came to the downside. We retraced. We're now coming to the downside. We are able to also add a fib onto this where we'll be able to see if we just do that, you'll be able to see 50% retracement level. 117 aligns closely with the minus 27.2, close enough. Um, minus 61.8 lines close enough with the area of 115. So we've got some confluence right there. However, we have broken through this level. We haven't really shown the lower high retest of it. This here is a lower high retest. And this here again is a lower high retest here on the daily time frame. So we could from this point continue into the area of 117 
After 117, we may then retrace before possibly then further downside movement. It's possible. Everything in the market is possible. We may retrace from here back into this level and then continue off to the downside. But I just want you guys to really see the bigger picture. Yes, there's levels in between this area like here that we would be able to add on the chart as we start to break the chart down from the higher time frames. But I'm more interested in seeing the bigger picture in this video. So taking it into the four hour time frame, and we can very much see that the market here has been pushing off to the downside. We've not seen no real deep retracements here in this uh, move. We've seen slight retracements, but nothing overall deep. We found a bit of a base here on the four hour time frame on Friday as we come to a close, which is what you can see right here. So all I would do is I would basically highlight this area here for me. So I know that this is the low. And I know that we could possibly retrace back up into this area here for continuation to the downside. We had quite a strong move right here to the downside. So I would be expecting a slightly lower high point to then roll over to the downside. But as I'm sure you guys can see, I'm heavily bearish on the dollar. Just look at the bigger picture. That's what the bigger picture is there for, to highlight to you the overall direction. And that is exactly what we can see happening here within the dollar. The overall direction is most certainly to the downside. So now let's take it into US soil. Let's go into the weekly time frame. So we can see here we obviously had this craziness here back in April where price went below zero, etc. Um, but price obviously has started to climb back to the upside through June and into July. It was very, very slow as price was coming into this area here of $44, which you can see right here. Previous rejection point price came super slow. We then rejected off of that point, came down into $33.50. And now we're seeing an impulsive move here to the upside. OK, we've broken above $40, $44. Now we're looking at the next barrier to the upside. $50. That's where we're looking for price to come into. Yeah, there's levels in between this area like $48 where price could reject or, and respect and then come back up to the upside into $50. But this is what I'm looking at on the bigger picture. We can see this is quite a large gap. So we will push back to the upside into this region. Okay. Into the daily time frame. And we can see that we had this sort of corrective move back into this area of 33.50 where we're now showing that impulsive move to the upside we broke above 44 dollars and we're now retesting the area of 44 dollars so from this point i am looking for further upside movement into the region as i mentioned overall eventually 50 dollars um Let's just bring this across here just so we can see. Price is cleanly re respected and retested this level right here. Okay, so again, we had this impulsive move to the upside. We then had this corrective pullback to the downside. We're now just showing the continuation to the upside. We can see that price has come into this area up here. We did break just above it, but we're now floating around it. Personally, I see further upside for US oil. We're forming higher highs, higher lows continuation is what i'm looking for okay so i'm looking for the continuation move here to the upside overall target 50 dollars psychological round area but do watch of course 47 48 49 they're round numbers where price will show a reaction okay price will show a reaction at these areas but i'm looking at the overall bigger picture and i can see that we've got that gap between 50 dollars we're more than likely going to come into that region after breaking through the $44, $45 region, okay? So that's exactly what I'm looking at within US oil at the moment. USD CAD absolutely broke through this support. that had been holding for quite some time. Price has been above here since 2018. Price has been above this region since 2018, and we're finally breaking it down. Okay, so we're breaking it down. Last week was a heavy bearish week to the downside, bringing us into the lows of around 1.27,800. But I see price coming into 1.26, 1.25. 500. We have come into this slight area of support here. Of course, we may see a reaction happen at this level, but as you guys know, we need to retest the. We need to retest on all levels okay so this here would have most likely been a retest of this level on maybe the four hour time frame this here is a daily retest of this level price actually came back and showed another one 
of this level. And then here we broke out. We didn't show a retest of this level. We then get the retest, which is the new lower high point, continuation to the downside. We then get the new lower high point. We're now seeing the market put in a new lower low point where we then will look for the new lower high point. And then to continue into 1.25, I see that potential. Price has got the space. Okay, there's space to come down into this area here. It's the next weekly rejection point that I would be looking for price to come into. Bringing it into the four hour time frame, then we can see price pretty much sunk off last week. So once price starts to find a bit of a base, which we know that price could could do from this area here let's just add it on so that you guys can see it when we're uh, more at closer price let's go back roughly around this area just here okay one two seven eight hundred one one two seven eight fifty price is coming to this level not saying it's definitely going to retrace from this area right now but eventually we are going to need to see a retracement take place now this is the four hour break and respect of this level we now expect to see a partial daily retracement to respect this level of 1.29366, 1 1.29500. Again, it's, it's all in that zone, okay? So I would eventually be looking for price to come back into this area when we need to see the market start to show us signs that it's ready to come back into that area and then look for the further continuation to the downside. So we moved pretty heavy last week into this region of this downside move, which you can see we do have this larger FIB move from this high here, into this low here, which has been achieved, the first area, minus 27.2 off the 50%. We're now, again, we can take retracements in this move before seeing it continue to the downside. But overall, I do see the market here coming into the overall region. So slight retracement possible, okay, it's possible. And then the continuation down into 1.25500 because I'm looking at the bigger picture. We can, of course, take upside movements and upside trades during that period because we may show some retracements like we have here, like we have here, okay? All these areas, we will see these retracements happen, but at the moment, we've broken through some key levels and we're looking good for some further downside movement in USD CAD at the moment. Euro Japan Yen pushing into a significant area so look at this weekly level through here okay previous areas of respecting this this is back in 2018 2019 when price has been respecting this point just here price then respected it in 2020 as well and price is coming back into this level what does that mean well it means price needs to make a decision when price hits a key level price needs to make the decision of break in which you can see over here or whether it's going to reject from this level and push back off to the downside. So by just looking at the bigger picture, you're able to understand that price is coming into this significant region that you now need to watch and see how is price going to react at this level. Okay, so let's highlight that level because we know that this is a significant point that we're going to be watching to see how the market reacts. Now, we, we can see that there's clearly lower time frame areas of support and resistance just through here as well, just there, where you can see close res respected here. We respected it as support through here and resistance through here. So we can, of course, come down into this area here, reject from here, push back into here, then break or then reject. That's the flow of the market. What I'm more showing you guys is the significant points in the market are very important because of as price approaches, you need to be watching. Are we going to break or are we going to reject from that point? So as Euro Japan Yen starts to come into the area of 127, I'm starting to watch how price action's going to start to react. When we're going to break a level, we break a level with momentum. When we break a level, we break it with momentum. So I would be expecting possibly retracement, then momentum break. Okay, then the pullback, then the continuation. We may push off and then we may reject again. Again, that's all about reading what price action is showing us. Over here, did price break with momentum? Price definitely did not break with any momentum over here. So because we can see price is not broken with any momentum, that shows us that price is more so looking to show a rejection from this level. Just like we saw here previously with this area of resistance, when we finally broke it with momentum, price can since then continued to the upside. Okay, so do be watching how price is reacting, how price is moving. Is very, very important. If you start to see price moving very corrective into an area of resistance, well, we're even going to 
show that rejection or pick up momentum. It's got to do one. Normally, we come into areas when we're going to break with strong momentum because that's the move that's going to cause the break of that level. Now, at the moment, we have been coming into this level with momentum, but it has just slowed down slightly as we now begin to approach this level. Therefore, we could see a possible rejection from here. So next week, I'm going to be very interested. How is price going to respect 127 within Euro Japan Yen? That is what I'm looking at at the moment in this pet. As we know from the higher time frames, this is a significant point in the market that price has respected previously several, several times. If we break it, it gives us great, great potential to come all the way back up into 133. That's the overall upside potential target if we are to see that break, okay? If we see it reject and then overall break 121, we're back on for downside movement. This is the bigger picture. There's obviously plenty of trading opportunities in between this region, of course. But I wanted to bring you guys something a bit different in this video. GB pound USD at a very, very significant area, okay, which is 1.34. 1.35, 1.34750, whatever people want to call it, that is in that zone that is very important. So you can see here previously, we respected it back here, respected it here, slight break above, break back below, respected it here, here, and most recently here in 2020. We're now back at this region. Price needs to make a decision. What is price going to do at this area of resistance? And that is exactly what I'm watching right now. We have been moving pretty corrective into this area, and we are now just stalling at this point. Four hour time frame started to break through this region, however, has fallen back below. Okay, so it's fallen back below. I am very much interested in watching how the four hour market structure starts to form in this region. This area here is a key level in the market, 1.33. If we start breaking below 1.33, then that would highlight the downside move off of this level because of structure changing, okay? Because we have that potential structure change. So as you can see, just by keeping the, clock, the charts super clean and clear, we're able to see these significant points in the market where right now, GB pound USD needs to make a decision. If we break this level, we've got great potential of heading into 1.38. You can see here there's pretty clean traffic here looking left and eventually it will get filled. So we could end up breaking and continuing into 1.38 as that potential area to the upside. But do watch and monitor how price does react here on the lower time frames. As I said, we did come into this area pretty correctively and we are slowing down and we're now rejecting from this point. I was looking last week, possible momentum was continuing through this level. There was great potential of possible a break of this level and the continuation. But at the moment, Friday's showing us a little bit different. So let's wait and see what GB pound USD does give us. Now, the last market of this session is AUD USD. AUD USD is just breaching above a significant point. Look left, okay? So this area is 0 0.74. We respected it here, respected it here, respected, respected, and respected here in August 2020. Into the daily time frame, we're able to see that price has been moving pretty corrective into this area as well. You can see here it's quite corrective. Oh, it's not very, very, very volatile. <clears throat> it's not very, very volatile break that I would like to see that momentum push through, breaking that level through there. We, of course, have levels in between that we will be watching to see how price does react at. You can see we've just caught these areas here, this hair, this support, this resistance, and then again as support around 1 point, 0 0.72, 0 0.72, 300 region. So as we're now continuing into the upside, I really want to see price continue above this level to highlight the further continuation. Now, remember what we looked at when we looked at the dollar. The dollar was looking extremely weak, so we could very well see a lot more downside in the dollar, which could lead AUD USD a lot more further to the upside. We're only just floating around this resistance here. There is nothing stopping next week possibly rolling over. But I want to highlight to you that we are in these significant points in the market 
that we need to watch to see how price is going to react at these levels. So into the four hour time frame, I'll now be watching the structure of the market, looking for further higher high, higher low for the continuational move and structure would need to change to the downside to show me something different. So this video has been slightly different to the usual technical insights, but I would love to hear your feedback um, in the comment section how much you like this. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not going back to the usual highlighting the moves, the exact moves that I'm looking for in the market. I just wanted to bring you guys some more value. I'm always about bringing you guys value in these videos because you take your time to watch these videos. And why would you want to watch these videos if there's no value? And that's why I thought by bringing out higher time frames and looking at the bigger picture of where the markets are currently sitting would really bring you guys some value because in the future, what's the first thing you're going to do? See where the market's sitting on the higher time frames. Are you in an area where price could potentially reject or does price need to potentially break this level? Okay, then it gives it, it opens up a lot more space, which is what you can see here on AUD USD big bit of space into 0 0.77500 if we're able to really continue through. Okay, so guys, that there has been Technical Insights, episode number 58, sorry, episode number 58. Um, give us a like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.